Today we are at WeWork and we are going to be asking some working professionals about no-code, low-code versus traditional coding methods used in businesses. So let's see how it goes. And how much money would you say you save by doing that? Like, lacks. 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 Back in the day it was WordPress and you buy a theme. Or now you have Squarespace, you have Webflow, you have Raymer, you, you have Wix, you have all of these different All of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you get a good full stack programmer, you can't even imagine your MVP. Uh, this is kind of expensive right resource. Fit. Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here with Lux. All right, Lux. So which domain mean do you work in? So I'm right now working with pharmacy, e-commerce pharmacy, right? And we supply super specialty medicines. And previous to that, I had my own startup in the mental health space. Okay. So I have an understanding of the entire healthcare sector from different angles, I would say. It's very interesting. I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth. So speaking of opportunities, there's this huge trend that's going on right now in the IT industry specifically about low-code and no-code tools. Are you aware of them? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With that being said, have you used any of these low-code, no-code tools just, oh, yeah. just for fun or anything professionally as well? So like my first startup, that was a mental health startup and mm -hmm. I built the entire thing on a no-code platform, like a Wix, right? Does not require any intervention and I could build it myself. And how much money would you say you saved? by doing that by relax lacks of money lacks 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 because like i now know the amount of money that we are spending on our de tech development right right now we're living in a world where you can create an application you can create a website you can do all of these things without even knowing a single line of code yeah now do you think that that is progressive or regressive for the development industry or the it industry progressive for sure otherwise you're not hidden behind this whole it department sort of thinking especially Correct. the greatest example i think is e-commerce shopify you know mm -hmm. we have Merchants that build jams out of their house, yeah. they go build a website, they connect a pay fact, they connect logistics, and none of them can code. But mm. Shopify has done for the ecosystem is so many people are now able to build stuff, speak language that only you know techies could do back in the day. Now, of course, we've seen with like say for web websites back in the day it was Word WordPress and you buy a theme or whatever. Mm. Now you have yeah. Squarespace, you have Webflow, you have Framer, you have you, Wix, you have all of these. All of these guys. Yeah. 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 We're living in a world right now where you can create applications, you can create websites and you can do all of these things without even knowing how to code. Do you think that that's a good thing or do you think that that's a bad thing and why? I think it makes it great for individually wanting to take ownership of starting something. So, you know, if they can't hire manpower, you know, and they need tools to like help them automate things, mm -hmm. I think it makes sense for them to use tools like these tools mm -hmm. yep. to like improve their credibility. I see, I see. And I do believe that these tools, if used right, can help you like grow exponentially. So it's about efficiency for you then? Using Correct. these tools would be about efficiency. Yes. Alright, so now we're going to look at AI's effect on the development industry. Is it disruptive or helpful? Okay, interesting question. See, I think it's like holding an ear from whichever side you want to. It is something that everyone is going to use, every industry is going to use somewhere sooner or later. The tech industry is already like the developers are already using it. We use it in-house, write codes we need like whenever we are facing any kind of a trouble. I would say disruptive like in order to create content you can just go to chat GPT that is some sort of disruption disruption I would say okay. but at the end of the day I would say that it is going to be used by each and every industry and it's going to be replacing a lot of menial tasks that you do I don't need to sit and write an email anymore I can really chat GPT it or Grammarly it yeah. because yeah. that does not require my brain space. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today I'm here with Venkat. Venkat. Hi Venkat, uh, what industry do you work in and what do you do for the living? Yeah, I'm from the banking industry. I joined Monzo, which is one of the first big digital banks of the world. So we are trying to do something different. So technology was a very important aspect, but you also had to think about it because uh, unlike say a Picasso, mm -hmm. uh, you can upload a photo and if you're lost, you only lose a photo. Correct. But in a banking, it's your money. Correct. If I get Correct. it wrong, yeah. you're mm -hmm. going to be terribly upset. Absolutely. And you're also going to get the regulators chasing you. Correct. We yeah. already yeah. know this from our recent history <laughs> with Paytm, right? <laughs> After that, I moved back to India. I was part of Jupiter, which is one of the first Lovely. digital yeah. banks in India. So I was the chief risk officer for it. Uh, how many years, if you had to summarize all of this experience in a number, what would you say that number is? About 21 years 21 years that is insane insane now uh, with the advancement of technology and with the advancement of artificial intelligence which i'm sure you're aware of uh, what are the kind of no code or low code tools that you've been exposed to that are helpful to the banking industry yeah, or technology I, I think what low code and no code allows you to do one of the toughest parts is 
to hire mm -hmm. a good quality full stack programmers Correct. etc exactly. because somehow if you have to imagine a product the engineer also needs to think with you like a product Correct. Correct. Uh, it's no more saying please do this code in cobol mm -hmm. uh, the engineer is a part of the product development yeah, exactly. and when that happens unless you get a good full stack programmer you can't even imagine your mvp and what that leads you to do is you are always looking for uh, this kind of expensive right resource yeah. but the fact remains is you're never going to produce so many computer engineers Correct. as much as your imagination mm -hmm. and not all your imagination become can become an mvp yeah. but between the imagination and the mvp mm -hmm. there is a huge hurdle in how to code it up right Correct. Yeah. now coding that up using low code no code allows your imagination to take birth the next two to three years with these kind of tools with these kind of integrations with these kind of automations that are taking what are the things that you are looking forward to in the next three years so one we're going to see a crazy spike in synthetic content consumption okay. that's the first thing so what we're going to see is one from a growth perspective we're seeing a lot of campaign management is going to move towards ai so you don't need a social media or a you campaign manager you don't need a campaign manager. that's wild. definitely going to be the big one that's why okay two yeah. is just managing even organic content mm -hmm. is going to start being very very ai driven mm -hmm. third search is going to be revolutionized now because now you're going to have people who can gauge search terms keywords phrasing much faster you don't need seo specialist right. on semrush mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. tell you what keywords to use you're going to just plug and play tools are going to come in so everything is going to be integrated folks that want to get into growth and want to get into this space will need to be moving at the same so universities are not able to keep up correct so you yeah. can't get a university degree for this stuff so if you want to get into growth marketing you're going to have to be on top of these products you have to talk what's happening and if you're building for the space just got to understand that a lot of people are stepping i was building for this space and i realized earlier like there are thousand people building the same space yes. so yeah. it need not be perfect hmm. earlier hmm. you could only put some figma files and say this is how it will work <laughs> now you have a low code and say hey look that's how it can this work. is how the ui is going to look this exactly. is what it, yeah, this is, you have brilliant, taken brilliant, brilliant it approach, one yeah. step further hmm. to say say how your baby will look like right exactly. so nice. i think no codes will play a role to quick imagination mm -hmm. but the final conclusion will still happen through slightly older techniques mm -hmm. i don't think we should say everything is going to be no code and, and everything is going to be everything old code there is a there is a balance between the two use no code for your mvp but use humans to bring home the deal and close it as, as yeah yeah put it like that yeah, yeah. all right venkon thank yeah, you thank this is a so pleasure much. of the conversation my pleasure thank Take you care. all right well there you have it ladies and gentlemen we've got some diversified opinions on no code low code and their implementations in the future it was a really interesting conversation I think we're going to be doing more things like this where we tackle these kind of questions with working professionals who have direct relation to them. So let us know your thoughts comment below or what you think about low code what you think about no code and we'll get back to you with another video soon. Thanks for watching and make sure you follow Builder Center.